Well, hello there, YouTube. My name is Tony, and this is Tony Live TV. And in today's video, I'm going to take a deep dive into the petitiometer. That's a tough one to say. On the 560 SL, the potentiometer sits right here. So I've disconnected this from the potentiometer. This is pins one, two, and three. And I have my multimeter connected. This is an inexpensive multimeter with an oscilloscope and signal generator. So I'll have a link to this in the description. So I've already tested this previously, I believe. Maybe it's in another video, I don't remember. Um, but I've tested everything before I put it back on the vehicle. But what I haven't really tested is it while it's on the vehicle, because that's a different scenario. It's, it's not controlled anymore. Uh, this here, I want to disconnect the plug to make sure that the wiring is what I expect it to be. Make sure I have a good ground, because the potentiometer is not going to work without a ground. So what I've done is I've connected to chassis ground. Actually, it's where all the brown wires go, right, on the engine. And that's where I'm connected to ground. And now I'm going to go ahead, this pin one here at the top, if you look, it's a brown wire, and it is ground. And we have it. As the potentiometer does its thing, that's going to be fed through here. And we're going to have uh, five volts through here. And, but we have to turn the ignition on first to see that. And I need to change my settings. All right, let's check it. I'm in the auto mode on that thing. See how it works. I haven't really tried that. Look at that, 4.95. So now we know we have our five volts coming in. But the next test is to test this number two. We've already tested that we have a good ground. And we test we have five volts coming in, but number two, we need to test that. So what I did is I created this mock-up plug with pins one, two, and three. Uh, if those of you who've been following my channel know that I did all the wiring on this vehicle as well. Well, I fixed plugs and fixed broken wires. I didn't rewire the whole thing. Just repaired what was there. And so I have some extra plugs and everything, so I created a plug that I can work with. So that is what I'm going to use. I mean, they're very inexpensive to make. Now that I've got my plug connected, I'm gonna go ahead and take my, my negative side or whatever here and then my positive side of the multimeter and put it here and have it on resistance. And we should get a constant reading between 3.6 and 4.4. I'm sitting at 4.2, a little bit higher resistance, but we're definitely within range. The next is between pin one and pin two. And we've got 2.075 helms. So as we slightly push this down, you can see the numbers rise. And you see it drawing a graph there at the bottom? I'm looking for a smooth graph. And then once it reaches the top, it starts to come down a little. See that? And then pretty much just stays there. That's bottom. And then the sweep back up. I went a little bit fast, but... Because we're going to look at this a little bit differently. But this is kind of a nice little inexpensive meter that uh, kind of allows us to look at that sweep. You see, we're, we're, you're looking for smoothness within that, right? You want that to be smooth. No ignition on, everything turned off. You don't have to worry about disconnecting fuel pumps, none of that stuff. Okay, I'm supplying five volts to pin three. I have a multimeter and the oscilloscope monitoring pin two. So you can see the difference in what's going on here. And then all I'm going to do is depress this, right? So let's watch and see what happens here. All right, whoops, I 
kind of bumped it there. You can see it in the oscilloscope. And then you, oh, my fingers aren't tall enough. There it is. All right, 4.825 over here. And that says it spiked up to five point whatever. So it, it was there. Now we'll come back down slowly. You can watch the multimeter. What you want is just a nice smooth transition. I'm doing it really slow so the oscilloscope is trying it, but you can see. Most of the sensitivity is just right here at idle mostly, you know, there's a lot of sensitivity here. So like something around idle is gonna be like right around here. I'm guessing somewhere right around here. About half the voltage, third of the voltage, something like that. And then when you give it throttle, right? Boom, boom. And then I see I double did that, see? So you can go boom, boom, boom. But that's what you're looking for. You're looking, that's, you're looking for a smooth, Transition from here all the way up. See the multimeter is doing just fine. There's nothing wrong with this potentiometer. Okay, so now for my final test. This is not in the manual. This is just something I'm gonna do. It's a live test. We did one and two. Now I wanna do two and three with the multimeter. The oscilloscope stays in the same position as it was. We start out at 4.89 or five volts. And when we depress this, you see those numbers go down. I don't know if I have my multimeter. Yeah, it's going to work. Good. Didn't know if I had the graph too low. And then slowly come back down or go back up. However you want to look at it. You see my graph is nice and steady and smooth. Kind of hard to go really, really slow, but I'm trying. Again, you can see like most of the voltage is going to be towards the top until she finally settles down. There it is. Well, I think that that's it. That's as far as I can go <laughs> with the potentiometer. Um, obviously, I could do a live test with the car running. I could do that. Um, but I'm simulating that right now. We already know we have five volts going to it. Now we know the potentiometer is functioning properly. Um, I have no complaints. So I think I need to move on in the KE Jetronics system and go through each and individual component and see how they work and do some tests like this. I hope you guys are enjoying these uh, videos, the detail behind them. I do a lot of research, you know. <laughs> Um, and it takes a lot of time to create these videos. Uh, make sure you click the like button, hit subscribe, and you know the click the bell for to be alerted. Tell your friends all about it. And if you want to help me financially, I have a PayPal link in there. You know, I had a camera break this this past week, so there you go. I could use a little bit of help. This is getting expensive, uh, you know, obviously to do the things that I do here. Uh, but again, I want to thank you all for watching.